Triple H vs. Scott Steiner and Kurt Angle vs. Chris Benoit are two matches that took place at the 2003 Royal Rumble. Both of these matches are unforgettable and still talked about amongst fans to this day, and rightfully so. One match is remembered for being an absolute masterclass, while the other one is remembered for being downright terrible. So terrible that the audience gave the loser of the next match a standing ovation for putting on a match that put the previous one to shame. So one day a couple of weeks ago, I was scrolling through the Squared Circle subreddit when I came across a GIF with highlights from Triple H vs. Scott Steiner at the Royal Rumble. I was watching this GIF and was going, damn, I don't remember this match being actually decent. But that's because the match isn't decent. It sucks, and the GIF did a good job at making this match look better than it actually is. Afterward, I wanted to see what others were saying, and I found a comment that was made by a user who actually attended the event. This comment really got me thinking about how Triple H vs Steiner and Benoit vs Angle were two infamous matches that happened back to back, but are completely night and day when you compare them in quality. These two users really inspired me to make this video about these matches, so shout out to them and let's get into this video. Triple H and Scott Steiner were feuding with each other after Steiner's infamous debut at Survivor Series 2002. and Big Papa Pump had decided to take his talents over to Raw after being promised a title shot for the World Heavyweight Championship. And considering this feud was during 2003, the Reign of Terror was in full effect and Triple H was your World Heavyweight Champion. Instead of having a regular feud where you're cutting promos on each other and then eventually wrestling against each other in a couple of matches, these meatheads decided to have an arm wrestling contest and a bodybuilding competition. Yeah, I think the HDH was affecting their train of thought. Now, this match didn't start off too bad, but very quickly it was getting repetitive because Steiner was just dishing out chops and heavy hits to Triple H in the back before Irish whipping him into another corner and proceeding to do the same thing. We then start to get a couple of suplexes, which weren't bad at all either, and at this point, we were only a couple of minutes into the match, so you were just nodding your head and going, okay, okay, this isn't too bad, but they're going to need to pick it up soon and start cooking. And then this happens. Scott Steiner, less than 10 minutes into the match, proceeds to get gassed and everything just goes downhill from here. Suplex after suplex after suplex after suplex. That was pretty much the only move that made up Scott Steiner's offense during this match, and by the time this piss poor attempt at a wrestling match was over, if counted correctly, there were 13 suplexes dished out during this match and only one of them was performed by Triple H. Steiner getting gassed and his suplex fueled offense was way too obvious that even the commentary couldn't ignore it. Again, yeah. oh, how many suplexes is Scott Steiner going to deliver on the world's tip? This match was an absolute show and Steiner came into this match getting mostly cheered as the babyface and by the middle of it was getting booed by the crowd because of his performance. This botched double underhook suplex didn't help turn the crowd in his favor anymore either. Steiner and Triple H make their way outside of the ring and Triple H goes to hit Steiner with the belt but nope, Steiner takes the belt away from him and hits him with the back of the belt which somehow opened up Triple H because he's bloody now. This honestly made me start laughing because he's currently stinking the matchup and pissing the crowd off with all these suplexes and has the audacity to start doing push-ups in the middle of the ring. I gotta give him credit for sticking to the gimmick though. Is that a purple thong he's wearing? Yes? Okay, that's interesting. Triple H was about to get himself DQ'd, but unfortunately, Earl Hebner hates the crowd and wants them to suffer, so the match continues much to their displeasure. And, oh, well, Triple H ended up getting himself DQ'd anyways, so what was... Yeah, just throw the whole match away at this point. I don't know, and I'm just happy that this match is over because my god, that was horrible. After the match had ended, Scott Steiner put Triple H in the Steiner recliner and the crowd was just raining down booze on them as multiple refs and even Eric Bischoff came to the ring to try and get Steiner to let go of the hold. Safe to say, the crowd didn't give a damn and were just desperate for both guys to get out of the ring. Let's talk a bit about why that match was terrible. At this point in time, Scott Steiner was past his prime in ring, and around April of 02, it had been reported that he had drop foot syndrome, which meant that he was even more limited in ring. Foot drop, sometimes referred to as drop foot syndrome, is a medical condition where a person has difficulty lifting the front part of their foot which is a sign of a muscular or neurological issue. I think this goes without saying, but being able to walk and run on your feet is essential to wrestling and coupled with the fact that he was past his prime in ring, Steiner was extremely limited in what he could do. But 
in the interest of fairness. This match wasn't solely bad because of Steiner. Triple H and that slow ass NWA style of wrestling he likes to do definitely didn't help this match at all whatsoever. The most memorable thing I can think of that he did during this match was Blade after getting hit with the backside of the belt, which makes perfect sense, right? And for those of you who might have forgotten, Triple H during this time was also suffering from a partially torn right quadricep. I think the one thing that could have made this match even worse was if Triple H had busted out those god awful biker shorts. I mean, just look at them. They're hideous. To sum up my final thoughts on this match, I'll let JR do the talking. I don't think I've ever seen so many suplexes in my life. The WWE roster in 2003 was stacked to the brim with talent, but I genuinely believe that the only two people who were capable at that moment in time of reviving the crowd's love for wrestling were Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle. The previous match absolutely killed the atmosphere in the arena, and when Benoit and Angle started wrestling, you could hear a pin drop. That's just how damn quiet it was. Scott Steiner and Triple H had done a lot of damage with their match, and Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit definitely had their work cut out for them. Little did the crowd know, that they were about to witness an absolute masterclass of a wrestling match, and all they had to do was sit back and enjoy the show. Benoit and Angle had been feuding off and on at this point for a couple of years and were even recently dubbed the winners of the tag team tournament for the blue brand before they lost the titles to Edge and Rey Mysterio in an absolutely classic match on SmackDown. Chris Benoit got the opportunity to face Kurt Angle at the Royal Rumble after defeating the Big Show in a number one contendership match on SmackDown. Whether they were wrestling against each other or wrestling together, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit have been involved in a multitude of classic wrestling matches. And on that night at Boston, at the Fleet Center, when they stepped in the ring, they once again created magic. Like I said earlier, for the first part of this match, the crowd was completely dead because of the damage done from the previous match, so whenever Angle or Benoit would perform a move, the majority of the time there was barely any reaction. However, about a couple minutes into the match, Benoit gave Angle a nasty looking DDT on the apron and the crowd started getting invested in what was going on. There are a lot of basic moves in both guys' moveset, but it's just the way they go about doing it, which makes it so unique. This crowd has definitely seen more than enough suplexes and probably didn't want to see anyone perform any for the rest of the show, but they instantly popped once Benoit started doing his signature trifecta and when Kurt Angle ran up to do his signature top rope suplex. After that top rope suplex, the crowd was fully into the match and the atmosphere was so lively. The crowd was rallying behind Benoit and really wanted to see him win to become champ. Crazy, with the constant shift in momentum, where one moment it seemed like Benoit had the upper hand, then Angle would gain the upper hand, and they just kept on going back and forth. Even I thought that it was going to be it, even though I knew who ended up winning the match. Crazy spot after crazy spot after crazy spot. Both men had long ago realized that it was nearly impossible to get the momentum and keep it, so the only way one of them was going to be able to stay on top was to find an opportunity and latch on and literally not let go, and that's exactly what Kurt Angle did, and Wah had no choice but to tap out. Team Angle had come back after getting kicked out by the ref at the beginning of the match, and put Angle on their shoulders to celebrate the retention of his title. It didn't matter if he won or not. It was the fact that he had put it all out there in the middle of the ring, and the crowd had to show their love, and you could tell it meant a lot. This match is one of my all-time favorites, and a beloved wrestling match for a reason. The counters, reversals, technical wrestling, mat wrestling, the chemistry, the psychology, the storytelling, the everything felt magical. Even if Triple H and Scott Steiner didn't have a stinker of a match before this one, it still would have been special, but I'm not gonna lie. Them shitting the bed like they did made the match even more enjoyable than it already was. I watched this match more times than I can count, and yet every time, I'm left in awe at just how amazing it is. So there you have it. The tale of two matches at the 2003 Royal Rumble. Both memorable, but for very different reasons. You had one match end in a chorus of boos, which had the Boston crowd begging for the wrestlers to leave the ring, while the other- Although I kind of felt as if I was being punished or something after watching Triple H and Scott Steiner, I got to watch Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit create magic right after it, so I'd say it was worth it. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and let me know in the comment section what you think of the matches and the video itself. Don't forget to hit the like button, and if you want more content about the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era, to hit the subscribe button. I'm GEG, and that was the tale of two matches from the 2003 Royal Rumble.